Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and I'm back with another Blender video tutorial. For this video tutorial we're going to see how grouping and advanced grouping works. And this will be pretty useful for both those who want to build abstract scenes and for those who want to build big scenes in Blender. Now let's begin, we have the default scene here open and the default cube selected. What I'll do is hit Shift D to create a duplicate of the first object, hit the right mouse button to cancel any movement for the copied object. I'll hit S and Z to scale the second cube on the Z axis, and then S just to scale it on every axis. Alright. What I'll do for this cube right here is move over to the modifiers and click Add Modifier and I'm going to add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Now let's say that we want to use both these objects in a scene. What we're having is a tiny bit of problem. You can of course join them, but if you want to join them you have to make sure that you first apply the subsurf modifier and then join them both by selecting them both and hitting Ctrl and J. But if you want to keep one object uh, with the subdivision surface modifier and the other as a simple mesh object, what you can do is put them in a group. So I'm holding down the shift key to select them both and hit Ctrl G for a group. And as you can see, we have a green highlight over both the objects. I'll move over to the group field right here and type in one. Okay. Now that they're both selected, I'll also hit the M key and move them over to the third layer. Now I'll move to the second layer and I'll hit Shift A and add group instance and I'll add the one group. I'll hit 7 and 5 on my numeric keypad for the top part of you. And I'll hit Z and Y to grab and move my instance and this is the group instance and not the objects on the Y axis. I'll also change the pivot point, move right here and change it to the 3D cursor. I'll hit Shift D, R and Z to create the duplicate of the group instance and rotate it on the Z axis and I'm going to rotate it for minus 45 degrees on the Z axis. Shift D, R and Z. 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 Once more, Shift D, R, and Z. Okay. And as you can see, we're having lots of copies of the group instance right here. I'll now hit Shift A and add mesh. Let's add an ecosphere. I'll hit the S key to scale my ecosphere up. Add about here. And then S and Z to scale my ecosphere on the Z object. Now we're having group A instances around and a mesh object in the middle. Now with, what we can do is hold down the shift key, select them all, both the mesh object and the group instances, and hit Ctrl and Z for another group. I'm going to call the second group 2. Now this is pretty interesting because we're actually grouping group instances and simple mesh object. So now if I move to layer 1, I can hit Shift A and add group instance and add the two group instance. Which is pretty interesting. Because now we're having a group that is consisting of group instances and mesh object. Now the good thing about the group instances is that you can change the group and everything you do on the group will be reflected on the group instance. For example, we can uh, select this cube right here and this cube use the subsurf modifier and then hit the S and Z to scale it on the Z axis a bit more and then hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit Control R for a few loop cuts. Okay. And then hitting tab to switch from edit to object mode and increase the subdivisions from 1 to 2. And as you can see by doing this we are actually getting it uh, refreshed and applied on every group instance that use the one group. Back to the third layer, I'm going to select this cube right here. And again, 
you'll see how we can modify this object and everything will be applied on the group instance. Let's add the wireframe modifier to this cube and I'll just increase the thickness, let's set it up to 0.2. Moving to the second layer, you can see that everything is updated. The group instances now use the object as modified. And again, on the first layer, we're having the scene, the new group instance that uses both the group instances and the mesh object. Now, what we can also do right here, and this is again pretty interesting as well, we can hit Shift A and let's add mess a UV sphere. I'll hit Z and Z to grab my ecosphere, uh, my UV sphere actually, and move it on the Z axis. I'll move over to the object data, click this little cube icon for the object data, and I'm going to hit add to group, and I'm going to add it to group one. Okay. Now, if I move over to the second layer, you can see that the UV sphere is added onto every group instances that uh, is the group one. Okay. And again, I'm going to select this one, move over to the modifiers, burn, let's add a symbol D for modifier and set it to twist and change the angle a bit. And you can see the simple D for modifier applied on the ecosphere right here and if we move to the first layer you can see that the twist modifier is also applied in the ecosphere that uses the mesh object here. Okay back to the third layer and I'm going to select the UV sphere and of course as you can imagine if we start adding materials and we have a simple material here Let's make this one a nice blue. Select this one, make it green. And we have duplicate material. I'm going to click this little two icon here for a unique material. And I'm going to set this one to be a nice yellow. Moving over to the second layer. And you can see that the materials are applied to every group instances for group one. And I'm going to select the ecosphere here. And let's add a new material for this one as well and let's make this one a bright red. And again, obviously this is also reflected onto group two, and this is the final group. As you can see, this is pretty nice for creating nice, interesting, complex scenes in Blender. Now imagine you want to build some sort of city or some sort of turbines for your spaceship and this is ideal for putting for quickly putting together objects that you can easily clone easily modify and have everything applied on the scene now i've used it in a few of my dailies i've used this uh, advanced grouping in a few of my dailies and let's see the recent a recent one let's select this one Let's wait for it to load. Okay. Now this is the Culture IX, if I remember well. I'm going to select the object, take a closer look. And this one uses, let's move over to the modifiers, uses a remus modifier. And if we delete the remus modifier, you can clearly see that this uses a lot of grouping and then putting everything into a new group and then grouping again and again until we get something interesting like this one. So this is Dimitris Christo, this is a nice little tip. It, it is pretty important, pretty nice for those who want to build both abstract and big scenes in Blender. And thanks for watching.